Hi, my name's Dave Gould and I'm Professor of Biology at the University of Sussex. Tomorrow is the 1st of June 2018 and a letter is going to be published in a scientific journal, a journal called in fact Science, um, and it's an open letter um, from scientists um, about neonicotinoid insecticides and it's primarily aimed at policy makers, decision makers in government. Um, I'm going to read it to you, save you the bother of reading it yourself, should you be interested. Bear with me. Neonicotinoids are the most widely used insecticides in the world, being applied to a broad range of food, energy and ornamental crops, and used in domestic pest control. They're neurotoxins with a very high toxicity to insects, a group of organisms that contain the majority of the described life on Earth, and which include numerous species of vital importance to humans, such as pollinators and predators of pests. Neonicotinoids have proved to be highly persistent in the environment, such that significant residues are commonly found in soils, wildflowers, streams and lakes. For example, a recent study in the journal Science found neonicotinoids in 75% of honey samples collected from around the world. Hundreds of independent scientific studies have been performed to assess their impacts on beneficial organisms such as bees, aquatic insects, butterflies and predatory beetles. It is the view of the undersigned scientists that the balance of evidence strongly suggests that these chemicals are harming beneficial insects and contributing to the current massive loss of global biodiversity. As such, there is an immediate need for national and international agreements to greatly restrict their use and to prevent registration of similarly harmful agrochemicals in the future. Failure to respond urgently to this issue risks not only the continued decline in abundance and diversity of many ben beneficial insects, but also the loss of the services they provide, and a significant fraction of the biodiversity heritage of future generations. So this uh, letter has been signed so far by 242 scientists from around the world. It's still open on SurveyMonkey should you be interested. You might be wondering if you're really on the ball why, why this is being published now because if you're based in Europe you'll be aware that the European Union recently decided a month ago um, that it was going to ban the main neonicotinoids completely uh, from use in uh, agriculture apart from in glass houses uh, which is pretty good news I think for European uh, insects. Um, and therefore you might think, well, the job done. Um, unfortunately not, because of course, um, if you live in the UK with Brexit, it's entirely uncertain what will happen in the future with regard to regulation of pesticides. And we would not be obliged to abide by this new EU um, ban. Also, of course, in the rest of the world, uh, neonicotinoids are still extremely widely used. For example, in the USA, Canada, South America, pretty much everywhere so far as one can ascertain. Uh, and those countries um, have not yet taken really measures of any significance at all to restrict their use. Now, if they're harming pollinators and other insects in Europe, they'll be harming them in the rest of the world too. So um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have a ban in Europe and nothing anywhere else. We should also, even if this ban does go ahead, um, and remains in place in Britain. Be aware that although we might have won something of a, a battle, the overall war um, is not one that we're winning. Um, not least because these pesticides, neonicotinoids, will just be replaced by something else and whether it will actually be any better is debatable. If you look at the history of pesticide use where for the last 70 years farming has become increasingly dependent on using lots of different pesticides. We've seen generations of pesticides come and go. They're, they arrive, we're told they're safe, that they're fine for the environment, uh, that they've passed the latest regulatory procedures, but then it turns out 10 or 20 years later that they're not safe and they get banned. So think of DDT and the organophosphates and now the neonicotinoids and so on. So there are new insecticides with great names that you can hardly pronounce like Sulfoxaflor, Flupyradifurone, Cyantrinlipol, and many other tongue twisters coming your way to a field near you sometime soon. Uh, and uh, 
whether these are safe or not is a moot. We don't know at this point. I personally do not trust the uh, regulatory systems in place to prevent the disasters that they've repeatedly allowed in the past. So we, we certainly need to keep a very close eye on this situation. In my view, what we really need to do is move away from systems of farming which are so heavily dependent on one type of pesticide or another. We have a situation where if we ban one pesticide, farmers just want to know what they can use instead, what other chemical is available to them. We really need to be looking for alternatives to chemicals if we want to find a truly sustainable way of growing food and feeding the world. Thank you.